What's up? It's Matt. We're back with another expert roundup. This time we got Arjun, the author of Wow One, one More. Not One More Customer, but One More. We'll be back to find out what One More is in one second. So Arjun, my temptation was to say one more customer. I'm assuming it means by a lot more. So I guess first introduce yourself and then tell us about the book and then we'll dig into it a little deeper. Yeah, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Matt. Uh, in the corporate world, I ran marketing and operations for Papa John's. And the big thing as a team, what we learned is how to dream big. And dreaming big means we went over a five-year period from close to $80 million to $1.2 billion. And the biggest thing in that journey was on one side, how do you start thinking beyond? But on the other side, what we also did not forget was the win happens wowing one customer at a time. Because all of us don't buy pizzas all together. You will buy a pizza tonight. I will buy the pizza tonight. It's all those individual wins. Just like on election night, whichever party you are in, every vote matters. That way that every customer experience matters. And that's the whole journey about for us in the consulting world since then has been all about taking brands where we take them to the big ideas. But at the end, it's all about making sure wowing one client or customer at a time. I love it. And the focus is is so in-depth from a standpoint that if you don't pay attention to that one, you can't pay attention to a ton of them. Uh, talk about the growth of Papa John's. How long were you with Papa John's? I was there with them for five years. Five years. Yeah. And, uh, and what was it like to see that growth in person, to go from <laughs> a few million to just astronomical? So to me, I think the number one thing is very important is to feel comfortable with the uncertainty, because it's just like when you're starting to drive and for the first time you'll be on a freeway, you have never driven at 65, 70 miles an hour. Be comfortable with that and stay the lane is very important. And that was one of the big things that was there. And the second thing, what we also realized that this kind of growth does not happen with small ideas, which means you really have to pick big ideas to start winning. At Papa John's, the two things, you know, what we wanted to look at was one, we built the first online ordering ever. And because of all the changes Papa John's have gone through, the online ordering side of the business is still nearly a billion dollars a year. Yeah. And that was one big aha that we learned together in that journey. And since then, I worked with a lot of brands. You know, One restaurant chain called Icon Burger, who became Smash Burger, is each one of us are on or can be on a path to a billion dollars. It's all about finding the right idea and then making ideas bigger instead of working on too many small ideas is very essential yeah. to make that. Because if you look at in those days, Domino's and Pizza Hut, they had more resources to build the first ever online ordering, but they couldn't because Papa John's, even though we were smaller, had a bigger heart and a team that wanted to win big. Wow. That's deep. I love it. Yeah. And the focus on, on one thing uh, is key instead of trying to conquer 20 things I've, I've heard consultants say, Hey, you got a river and you're building a bridge over the river. Don't build 10 partially built bridges and fall in the water, build yeah. a bridge over the water and get, get it done. I love that wisdom. I'm going to use it, Matt, give me credit. Yeah. And, and it's, it's out there. Cause I mean, a lot of businesses I've seen companies that on like on my side, on the marketing side, they're like, Oh, we're going to, we're going to get on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat and TikTok tomorrow. And I'm like, well, you, you suck at one of them right now. Do you want to suck at six of them? <laughs> Yeah, if I may add one more thing is many a time you also will see companies get tired of their website and every two or three years they want to make the website new. What I tell them is if you and I own the company, you and I spend way more time on our website yeah. and that's the reason we are getting fatigued. Our clients don't. Let's just update content because the websites alone could sell. You and I cannot build a website or buy something at $50 to $100. Like websites would be costing millions of dollars if websites alone sold. So to me, I really feel this constantly working on small ideas. And that's the part where this is not, not one my one-liner. I learned it from somebody wise. Sometime I forgot who it is, is the very fact you can doesn't mean you do that. Yeah. And that I think is so important. 
Yeah, it's ironic. I, it's like you were listening to my car ride today. I was with one of my my marketing director today going up to pick up a car at the repair, getting a new tire, and we were talking, and he's like, yeah, I think the website's tired. I said, my website's not tired. He's like, I th- think it is. I said, dude, you look at it 40 times a day. Yeah. <laughs> Other people look at it once a month. I'm like, it, it ain't tired. Leave it alone. Just make some adjustments to the content and, and move a couple okay. things around. Yeah, make it vibrant, make it relevant, make it updated. That's it. Yep. But keep the same structure. So what was the uh, what was the motivation behind the book? And uh, if you haven't seen the book yet, here it is right here. Uh, wow, one more secrets to win big from 13 restaurant leaders. What was your motivation behind it? And what, what allowed you, what got you to pick the 13 people? So to me, you know, I was fortunate to have 13 amazing conversations. And later on, when I started reflecting on this, I started realizing that each one of these leaders, even though they have different paths, their style is totally different, but there's something commonality between all of them. And the commonality between all of these guys are, they are winners. Winners doesn't mean they always win, but they they have the heart of a winner and win they all define by the team picture, not individual holding the trophy. And that's once I started looking at, you know, of course, Blaine Hurst, CEO at Panera. I fortunately, I was fortunate to work with him when he was at Papa John's. Was the most unique boss ever who never told me what to do. There would be times I would walk into his office and said, boss, no clue what I'm doing. And he would smile at me and said, if I do the thing or tell you what to do, why do I need you? I'm like, right away, I got it. Okay, But at the same time, the commonality between him and then there is also, you know, Tom Cole, one of the softest spoken leaders ever. If there are 10 people in a room, Tom is usually the 10th person, which told me leaders doesn't all have to be alpha. There are different personalities. You have to be who you are comfortable with as you start going through. There are four or five things that a leader must do. Number one is a leader sees the finish line and can translate it to every one of us from where we are. Like without us seeing the win and a path to win, as head of marketing, your head of operations, let's say, we can't win. The second thing the leader does is comes and says, how do I break barriers? You, as the head of the university, you can see things and your marketing team that others can't. Whereas if I came to you and say, boss, this is a challenge I see, you can just see that and break the barrier in a second. The ROI of your effort is priceless. Third is, what resources do you bring? And fourth is, after all that, you really need to back off and be a cheerleader. And the fifth one I've added just to give credit to my wife is, my wife and myself have a very simple rule. You can tell me what to do, when to do, but never how to do. The moment you tell me how to do, you really don't need me because then I'm not motivated. I really mess up on those tasks. So, and that's the common thing. If you start going through, if you read the book or listen to the podcasts, what you'll see is very important for you to be you. Matt cannot be anybody else. You have to be only you. And then you find your own authentic path to win. And that makes it so incredible in the journey forward. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And you, you've got it spot on. A lot of people, you know, they want to say, Hey, I need you to do this. And then by the way, do it exactly this way. And that's well, why, do, why, why, why do you need me? Yeah. Why do you need me? I'm useless. You know, you, yeah. don't, you don't tell the shovel how to, how to, how to go on the ground. Yeah. So uh, what are you doing these days with uh, Zen Mango and consulting? Yeah. Zen Mango, you know, we are a boutique firm. Our goal is very simple, especially, you know, we do a lot of work in the restaurant space and beyond. If a brand wants to just be a little better to survive today, we are not the right brand. Because I really believe in the animal kingdom, if you and I were both, let's say, a deer or something like that, all we needed to do was outrun one more deer that day for us to sleep outside the belly of a tiger. That's all it took. But that is not a leader. Because that when brands want to just have that tiny big idea, Sooner or later, you'll be inside the belly of a tiger. Okay. So for us, it's all about winning big, which again comes down to the whole three things I talked about is how do you help them see that thing that they haven't seen before? And that's the part where every business has these big ideas. 
you know, when we looked at Icon Burger, you know, my whole thing was, of course, with a client, you don't say that, but the world didn't, didn't need another burger place. But when we started seeing that they were smashing every burger, and then, you know, I'm not that smart, you have figured it out by now, I realized that when smashing, it becomes a juicier burger. The flavor goes all the way in. I got it. I even realized they even smash the chicken when they make a chicken sandwich, okay? Oh, you know, we don't need to have a big branding story. Just, I get it. Smash, better tasting, I'm buying it, okay? And now these guys, you know, got sold for nearly $400 million to Jollibee Foundation after 10 years. And that's the whole thing is it's a simple story that connects. And for Zen Mango, at the core, we really feel, and I really have to take a little step back. I wrote a book called Customer Karma. Okay. Okay. When I read the book, I realized I missed the biggest thing in the book. I didn't even talk about it once. And that's the reason we went for the IP. We are all in the feeling business. Okay. It really doesn't matter if I got you the coolest thing, if I made you feel bad, why will you work with me? Like, why would a client ever work with you? or a customer come to you who feels bad when they leave. So it's all about the feeling business. So when every customer comes in to your restaurant or consulting service, they have to feel excited. But then when they leave, they just must leave with the happiness that we left from our grandparents' place with all the gifts, all the food and everything else that we want to come back for more. It's a very simple thing. It doesn't have to be perfect, but creating and focusing on the feeling part is very important. Yeah, for sure. I love it. Well, I appreciate your time. I guess in closing, uh, the book is easy to find. You can find it online. You can find a lot of places. If you do get it on places like Amazon, make sure to leave a review so that people know. And then uh, Zen Mango is how people can get a hold of you. Anything you want to say in closing with regards to you know anybody needing help or work reaching out to you? Yeah, I just would request that each one of us in today's difficult times must not only try to solve the problem in front of us. It's If you try to survive sooner or later, I'm sorry, let me be the bearer of bad news. Yeah. We won't make it. Yeah. But to me, you really need to have the heart of thriving. This is something I learned from the free hazlet of C-Suites Network when the COVID brought, he, uh, broke first. He started teaching all of us was thrive not survive and i really think that is the mindset that we must all have because even in today's world small or big whatever size you are your company is you really can win big and it's all about create your own path but just believe when you look at the mirror don't see yourself as a sulky you know person see yourself as the winner holding the trophy and then you'll win so don't don't try to survive thrive thrive i love it well, I appreciate your time today. I look forward to it. And everybody out there, get out there, check the book out, get it, read it. And uh, thanks for all you do. I look forward to reading your other books. Thank you. Thanks, sir.